You know, last year, late 2023, I hit you people in the head because you deserve it. I hit you in the head like New Jack in a run-in in the ECW arena in 97. I hit you in the head with Jim Cornette, the stupidity of Corny. I hit you in the head with that beautiful series. That series shall continue. You know, I also had a series on this channel called, um, I think, it was, I th oh, Lord, I can't even remember the title. It's been that long. <laughs> it's been that long. That's what she said. I had a series. I think it was called LeBron, The Last Dance or something. I don't know. The Last Flop. I don't remember. I was supposed to, like, do the season finale, but I don't care about him. Maybe I was going to do it this summer, but maybe I'll save it for, like, opening week of the NBA this year. The season finale. The series finale. Look forward to that. But, um, good Lord, is there an echo in this room? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, this should be better. All right. I don't know if there's an echo or not. I was recording in a certain type of situation. But uh, now I'm going to hit you in the head with a new series called The Two-Faced Nature of Kevin Nash. Oh, this is a limited series. Hit the like button. Share this video. Subscribe to the channel. Now... Big Daddy Cool, <laughs> Oz, <laughs> Vinny Vague Ass, <laughs> so many bad gimmicks, uh, Diesel and I guess Kevin Nash is the two that worked, I guess, D did Diesel really work, I mean, hold on, this is making me drink, hold on, mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. yeah, mm. Mm -hmm. Paige was making them same slurping sounds on that tape. Can you can you imagine the smell of that belt? That what happened to that NXT belt? Did they throw it away? <laughs> Did they put that belt on the um? What's that show on A and E where they look for missing items? <laughs> I, I bet they're missing that title belt. Where is Brad Maddox? Fake ass Eric Bischoff. Anyway, but our um Kevin Nash. Did the Diesel thing ever work? That's another story. Episode one: The Two Faced Nature of Kevin Nash. <laughs> ah, Big Daddy Cool. Goldberg. Oh, oh, you know, uh, I, I like Bill. You know, uh, you know, uh, Bill. Uh, he's a he's a he's a great guy. You know, uh, I I like Bill. You know, uh, <laughs> he's sweet. You know, Bill's he's a sweet guy. You know, but uh, Bill's a mark. You know, that right there. The two faced nature of Kevin Nash. Kevin Nash and Bill Goldberg. Their history. Their history goes back to. I believe, um, you know, the thing about this is kind of fuzzy, actually, because a lot of the WCW stories of a lot of people's relationships, a lot of them were, you know, yeah, we met this guy. He was he was a, a bouncer in a bar. He was a bouncer at a strip club. I believe Nash was doing this work, too. And I think Scott Hall. But so I can't remember if because um, I believe Nash. I'm trying to remember what he said. I think I think he maybe he knew Goldberg before the whole wrestling thing, but whatever the case. But when you get to the meat of it, Paul's good lord. What type of Janelle Grant? Um, Goldberg enters WCW from the power plant in '97. He debuts, and before he really, really, really gets over, Scott Hall and Kevin Nash, you know, they they uh they're there, they see him. And they try to offer him, hey, you need a ride. Hey, you need a hotel. Hey, 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 uh, we could help you travel. You know, they, they realized he was green and he's new to the wrestling business. So you fast forward to the summer of 98. Bill Goldberg's on fire. Hogan is actually going to put somebody over. They put Goldberg over. He's still on his rookie deal. Soon he renegotiates. And then apparently Hall and Nash were the ones who, hey, uh, get with this agent. I, be, I believe uh, Barry Bloom, maybe it was. Hey, uh, ask for this much money. Hey, do this. So they claim, and Kevin Nash, let's stick to him. Kevin Nash claims that, well, I helped Bill. You know, uh, you know, uh, Bill's he's a great guy. You know, uh, I helped Bill. Uh, you know, he's sweet. You know, and um, I, you know, we helped Bill learn how to make the towns, and we we helped him with his hotel, and we told him how much money to ask for when he renegotiates, and we we tried to give him, you know, this advice and that advice. Okay, great. So we helped him. But then Nash, well, yeah, we, you know, ended his streak. But, I mean, come on. I mean, uh, they're, they're training Goldberg sucks. I mean, come on. <laughs> oh, God. They're chanting Goldberg sucks. You know why they were chanting Goldberg sucks in late 98? Because WCW bucked Goldberg to spear Sting. People don't remember this. 
they were very slight. It was very slight. It was not the whole building. It was not Roman Reigns or Cena where the building is rocking with booze. No, it was slight chance of Goldberg sucks. Slight chance. Why? Because wrestling is human psychology. If you remember the fall of 98, they started to book Goldberg against other baby faces. And they did, they did a, um, an angle where Sting is in the wolf pack and Goldberg accidentally spears Sting. Sting is beloved. They are both over. Goldberg was over, but Sting was beloved by the WCW audience. So human psychology, you're going to turn a small portion of the audience to boo him. That's what that was. They were not booing him because we booked him undefeated. That's not what they booed him. But Kevin Nash logic, and to this day, it's like Vince Russo. And I like Russo, but to this day, Russo will still defend. Uh, David Arquette, the world champion, was good. <laughs> oh, God, that's a rant for me to do later. <sighs> so they beat Goldberg, and Goldberg says that he knew he should not have lost. But whatever the case, um, at that particular time, and, and I do think Goldberg losing, first of all, that, that is one of the worst, if not the worst, booking decision in wrestling history, because why would you do that? Goldberg's gimmick is, and, and you know, this this is more the stupidity. Nash and, and these people, well, you know, how, how you know, at some point Bill has to show some sort of vulnerability. No, he doesn't! He's Goldberg! His gimmick is he's not vulnerable, you idiot. His gimmick is he's a he's a he's a machine. If he loses, that destroys his gimmick. Okay, and um, how over was Goldberg after that? Okay, it was never the same. Was he still over? Yes. But it wasn't like it was before that? No. Why? Because you just sliced a piece of him off. Pause. But today, till today, Kevin Nash will still do this. Oh, well, you know, people say I, I you know, people say I beat Bill for like, uh, you know, you know, out of my ego. And yeah, I do have an ego and I'm 11 inches soft. But, you know, uh, what type of run did I get with the strap? <laughs> I didn't even have a good run with the strap. I think I lost to Hogan the next week. Uh... <laughs> I love Kevin Nash revisionist history. Love it. He he's so he's so Vince McMahon. He's so Triple H. He's so Connecticut. He's so New York territory. <sighs> Kevin Sullivan, who was a man who had booked WCW into his prominence in ninety six ninety seven, was out of he he was being moved out of power, or he already was at that point, so he couldn't stop it until to the, till this day. Sullivan says we should never beat Goldberg. Heenan, Bobby Heenan, to the day he went to the grave, was saying, why did we beat Goldberg? Mike Tanay, why did we beat Goldberg? Even Little Meltzer says, why did they beat Goldberg? <laughs> One of the rare occasions where, where Meltzer makes sense. A little small hat. Hit the like button for that. Hit the like button for little Davey Meltzer. <laughs> Boy, I tell you, the two-faced nature. Now, the two-faced nature, let, let, let's get beyond that. The two-faced nature of Kevin Nash is you help to hurt Goldberg's career, but then, oh, you know, Bill, he's a great guy. But then, so you hurt his career booking-wise, but then, oh, he's a great guy. But then, oh, well, you know, Bill's a mark. But then, oh, Bill, you know, he's he, he was a great guy. Okay, it's the, the two-faced nature of Kevin Nash. He compliments you and then backhands you. And then gives you a backhand compliment and then compliments you and then backhands you. The two-faced nature of Kevin Nash. Hey, uh, you know, uh, me and Bill are friends, you know. Uh, me and Bill are friends. Five minutes later, Bill, you're a mark. Oh, my, I'm, you know, I'm so tired. Bill is such a mark. He keeps telling me, telling people how I, how I ruined his career. And he's such a mark for the belt. He's a mark for the, the two-faced nature of Kevin Nash. He goes back and forth like Paige on that tape. Good Lord, she was, woo, Paige on that tape. Man, she likes chocolate and vanilla. <laughs> Paige. Oh, man, I, I would love to see Nikita Lyons on a tape like that. Damn. Woo, Nikita Lyons is thick. She's thick with two C's, man. Maybe three or four C's. Can't be natural, but woo, is she on the main roster? I, I refuse to watch current wrestling. Nikita Lyons. Oh, my God. What is this video about? <laughs> what am I talking about? What is this video about? What's the title? Oh, Kevin Nash. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Something more important came up. Literally. Easy, big fella. 
You know, I always enjoyed the rock concerts. <laughs> Leaving Sacramento. Sacramento, here I come. They got some fat ass women and the rock's just gonna say no. <laughs> that, that is classic. <laughs> Leaving Sacramento. Oh man, the rock. One of the true greats. Another person that Kevin Nash is two-faced about is The Rock. But that guess what? That's another episode in this series. Nash hurt this man's career. And and I don't and some people who are, you know, real wrestling heads, they might be thinking, what about when Nash got in the storyline with Goldberg in 2000? When Russo's booking in 2000, they had a pay-per-view, I believe it was uh New Blood Rising, I believe it was. And I believe they booked a triple was it a triple threat I, I'm try, there was a triple threat i can't remember if it was new blood rising but it was it was goldberg nash and scott steiner and i don't know if this was scripted or nash went against the script but once again let, let's if it was a shoot which i don't know if it was russo wanted everything to be a work a work shoot so there is a segment before the pay-per-view where nash and goldberg are in the ring talking and nash says well goldberg you might be undefeated but you got one loss and you're looking at him. Now, that that's a hell of a line, but that is at that particular time, was Nash th- this is another problem with Nash. It was hard to tell when is he a face and when is he a heel. He Kevin Nash is like a tweener. So would a heel say that? Yeah. Would a face say that? No. Was that scripted? Because why, if, if you're pushing Goldberg, you don't want, you'd want people to not remember he actually lost. Because part of his gimmick is he doesn't lose. There's certain, like, th- this is the, that's the art of protecting, maintaining, pushing, building a gimmick. People like Goldberg, people like Ultimate Warrior, people like Batista, people like Brock Lesnar, you don't want people to remember that they lost if you had them lose. Unless they're a heel. If they're a face, you don't want them, you don't book them to lose. And if you do, or some idiot did, you you want that to be like washed away. So, I don't know. That might have been a questionable situation, but it's the two-faced nature of Kevin Nash. And for all you sensitive man worshipers, because there's always some, let me let me make you feel comfortable if you made it this far. You probably didn't, you, you minute men. I like Kevin Nash. Let, let me say, let me make you feel comfortable, okay? Because grown men get sensitive when you criticize celebrities they like. I like Kevin Nash. He's a legend. He wasn't a draw in WWF. He was a draw in WCW for the uh, for 96, 97, then that 98, but then that dried up. But um I like Kevin Nash. He's a legend. Yeah, yeah, he's in their BS Hall of Fame. He got stabbed in the Punisher. He's 11 inches soft. <laughs> he's too sweet. <laughs> Shawn Michaels botched a power bomb at, at WrestleMania 11 or whatever it was. I don't remember. But um, that's Kevin Nash. This is episode one. This is going to be a funny series. It's going to be a hell of a series. With that said, I'm up out of here, and that is it.